Hi, welcome back to the Law and Crime Network. I'm Linda Kenny Bodden, and we are talking Weinstein, Weinstein, and more Weinstein because of this, this morning he was convicted of two counts that he was charged with dealing with two different victims, Mimi Halle and Jessica Mann. And for this segment, I have a very, very special guest with us here at the Law and Crime Network exclusively, Jose Baez, who represented Harvey for a period of time. And I know I was with you for a little period of that time, uh, but to talk about the verdict today. So, Jose, hello. Thank you. Welcome for, to Law and Crime. Hello. And Great let me to be just here. Yeah, I thank you. And let me just ask you my first question to you, which is what's your reaction to the guilty verdict on the two counts where Harvey could do 29 years in jail? I'm shocked. Completely, totally and absolutely 100% shocked. I thought this case um, was a very winnable case for the defense. I thought they were going to pull it off uh, and um, you know, I'm just really still in shock over the whole thing. Well, on one of the counts, the one that we had been talking about in the studio, we were all a little surprised, or many of us, the Jessica Mann count because of the over 400 emails that she had with Harvey. But the jury did find uh, that there was a Class E felony here in New York. He could, he could do um, uh, four years in jail for the uh, third degree, okay, the third degree rape, third degree sexual assault, we'd call it in other states. Uh, why do you think that happened? Why do you think the jury found that looking back now? I, I think the case was lost at jury selection. I think what a lot of people don't realize, and a lot of those who are accused of crimes uh, real, don't realize this, this is not a job where you can learn on the job. And when it comes to these high profile cases, they're very, very different. They're unlike any other case you've ever handled before. And you could be an experienced, seasoned defense attorney in your own jurisdiction, and boom, you get thrown into a whole new world. And that's the world of media scrutiny. Uh, this is the world of everybody has on a different face. And there are things that you have to do to set yourself up to prevent those from affecting the case. And those were not done in this case. Uh, it's my understanding that uh, Donna Rotuno did the first round of jury selection, which I'm shocked because uh, she's from Illinois, and in Illinois they do not have uh, attorney conducted voir dire. Uh, it's also my understanding that, it, well, so obviously she didn't have very much experience in this area, and for this to be your first case, or for you to get your experience on this case, um, that that's baffling baffling to me, uh, given the nature and, and the extent of publicity that this case received. On top of that, you're dealing with folks that are outside of your state. And on top of that, you've never really done this before. Uh, that, that's a recipe for disaster. And, and I can only assume that this goes back to the big misconception that Harvey needed a female lawyer. I think you need the best lawyer for the job, not the best, uh, I, I guess, gender for the job. I, I don't think it's a gender-related occupation. This is a this is a uh, a job that has to be done a certain way, and and this is not a knock on, on Donna in any way, shape, or form. It's just you got to see these things coming, and, and you need to have people with experience in these types of cases. Jose, you and I have had this discussion about uh, you win or lose these high-profile cases and jury selection, and it's a different game. It's a different animal trying a high-profile case than your normal, you know, burglary or your normal criminal case. So what would you have done differently? And I agree with you, by the way. I think that this conception that you need a woman to question a woman in a rape case is ridiculous. But what would you have done differently? Well, the whole jury selection should have been done differently. Uh, there, uh, the the fact that this female juror sat on this case, and uh, the defense was out of peremptories, you you plan for these things, you anticipate these things, you look beyond what you have and who's who's coming up next, and, and, and that was a huge huge problem. Uh, in addition to the experience of, of uh, my understanding is that the, the jury selection just was not taken 
uh, seriously, and the person who conducted it didn't have the experience. Uh, Harvey had Ben Brothman, who had plenty of experience on uh, in high profile cases before I ever got on board. And, and that's the type of lawyer you need. You need someone who's been down the road you're traveling, not someone who's uh, seeing it for the first time. So yeah. that's, that's number one. But it, in addition to that, the jury questionnaire, uh, that should have, you're gonna have to go back and look at that and see if that was done uh, correctly. I know right about the time I was getting off the case, there was a huge debate over the jury questionnaire uh, because the prosecutors wanted a certain, they wanted everything that they had suggested and none, nothing that the defense had suggested. So um, that's a source of, of, of huge debate. In addition to that, I understand there was a jury consultant for the defense. Whomever that was clearly dropped the ball here. Uh, and that's why you have that Jessica Mann conviction. So you asked me, back to your original question, how did this whole thing with Jessica Mann, uh, how did they get a conviction with her? Well, the reason for that is <clears throat> during jury selection, you obviously had a jury that would not bond with you or your client and was going to buy the uh, state's case hook, line, and sinker, especially with someone who had as much baggage, baggage as Jessica Mann did. And let me uh, go uh, one step further then and ask you, Jose, when you have these cases where you know that this is going to be a hot topic and almost every woman I've talked to has had some kind of sexual assault, whether it be a pat on the butt or a pat on the head or a you know, nice little girl type bit to a rape, uh, that to make ultra or make statements outside which may get back to the jurors the, that you haven't been sexually assaulted or, or whatever do you think that did get back to the jurors do you think that harmed the case oh i, I you know the the media handling by the defense team was um deplorable uh and, and i hate saying that and criticizing my colleagues like that but you're busy there's a lot going on during a trial and to do that much media, uh, it was shocking to me. Uh, you really need to be focused on the actual trial, at your job, things you have in front of you. And now I, you can't, I can't blame the defense team here because you don't know if this was initiated by the client or by the lawyers, and, and only they know the answer to that question. So if in fact it was driven by the lawyers, that's a huge mistake. And if it was initiated by the client, the lawyer should still uh, voice their objections. Uh, and I, it just gives off, let me see if I can paint this a, a better way for you. The jury is a special group of people. And you always have to remember that. You can't forget that for a second. And you always have to treat them that way and give them their due respect. And their due respect is addressing them solely in the courtroom. You're asking them to ignore everything that's on the outside, but you're going out there and talking on the outside. So it's almost like you're speaking out of both ends of your mouth here. And I think jurors dislike if they find out that a current lawyer is talking outside of the, uh, outside in the, outside of the courtroom during the trial, because Everyone in that courtroom should be held to the same standard. The prosecution wasn't doing it. The judge wasn't doing it. But the defense can do it. And neither could the jury. The jury couldn't do it. So you, you kind of, you, you're putting yourself in a bad position and, and opening yourself up to scrutiny by the, by the jury. And you might ask yourself, well, how does the jury know if they're not paying attention? Well, they may not be watching it, but someone in their family is. So, Jose, Jose you know what? I'm going to have to take a break, but I actually have two more questions for you. Can you stay on the other side and just answer them? Sure. Thank you very much. We're going to take a break. Stay with us. Jose Baez on the other side on Harvey Weinstein.
Welcome back to the Law and Crime Network. As you know, this morning at 100 Center Street down in New York, Harvey Weinstein was convicted of two counts. One was criminal, uh, it was criminal sec sexual act. It's with Mimi Halle. It's actually by forcible compulsion. So it, it sounds, it doesn't sound as bad as it really is because he could go to jail for 25 years. The other one was a rape in the third degree, a class C felony, we call it here in New York, uh, where he could go to jail for four years. That's uh, allegedly, uh, it's not allegedly anymore, the rape of uh, somebody he probably considered uh, a lover, uh, a, 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 a lover without force, and that would be Jessica Mann. I have with me, as you know, a very special guest, and I'm bringing him back for after the break because I told you I had two more special questions with him, and that is Jose Baez, who represented Harvey Weinstein uh, for a period of time in New York City, and you know that he has a lot of experience with high-profile cases and a lot of experience with those words, not guilty. So let me ask you the two questions, Jose. You alluded to the extracurricular press of the uh, lead attorney and the uh, team while this trial is going on. There's been a lot of issues concerning uh, and discussion concerning an op-ed that she wrote for Newsweek, uh, Donna Rotuner, which she begged the jury, implored this jury to do the right thing and ha find Harvey Weinstein guilty, uh, not guilty. Uh, they did on the PSA, on the predatory sexual assault. Uh, along your lines, why was that an issue for the defense? Why should, should or should not have that been done? Well, as I alluded to in the prior segment, um, you, when you're trying these cases, you want to refer to what's going on out on the outside as a service. And it's not reliable. And the only thing you could rely on is what's going on in here. And once you can get the jury to buy into that, you have to be consistent with that, not only with your words, but with your actions. And, and that's, that's a problem there. And, and, and here's the... It, it, I know you want to focus on the defense, but but I have to. I think I would be remiss before I, before I, I, I without mentioning, the prosecution has no business doing any type of uh, victory laps here. Uh, they had every single thing in their favor. They had a movement against them. They had a very uh, not likable figure. That, that they were pointing the finger at. They had a, um, a, they had everyone believing that this person, the presumption of guilt was strong here in this case, even though the evidence didn't support it. Uh, they had favorable uh, charity rulings from the bench uh, where they, allow, they were allowed to show naked photos of him in, in a case that was not an ID case uh, I, I, I remember when this whole theory came up, we called it uh, the elephant man prosecution, because that's really what they, they, they tried to paint him. Not only did they point the finger at him and say, he's fat and ugly, uh, he's, uh, they, they brought in the, the photos to, to add on to that and say, and say, not only that, but he's also disgusting and, and you should convict him on that. So, you know, it, it, it was really... It, it was really a deplorable prosecution, and and they allowed this circus to occur outside, and and, and I, I look I can respect the movement, I can respect the message, uh, but when you try to use it to circumvent our criminal justice system and the freedoms that we all have as citizens, we're not free because. The, the circus basically took control of this case. Well, Jose, and, you know what? I have to interrupt you. I have to interrupt you because we have to discuss what some people say was the circus, and that was an interaction this morning after the verdict between Gloria Allred, who represents some of the victims, and the defense team. Let's, lock, let's watch. You guys are going to have to make a choice because we have to go do some work. So you can either hear from the defense okay. team or you can hear from You're Gloria. You're not going you to silence to me again. No silencing you. Oh, yes, no you silence. are. All right. Oh, so yes, then you guys you aren't are. going to hear from us. Well, really? All right. I have a short statement. 
Today, the jury in the criminal case of the people of the state of New York versus Harvey Weinstein returned a verdict against the defendant. Guys, you gotta get down, all right? Harvey Weinstein. It's not about you, baby. Get down. Do you want to go over there? Is that what you want to do?